So we've created our hash. We've created our inner class of hash element that we're going to put inside the array. We've created our array of elements. And so now what we actually want to do is we want to use our hash, right? So we're going to add something. So let's take a look, for example, at our public, let's make it a Boolean, add. And add is going to take two arguments. It's going to take a key and a value. And just like we've seen before with generics, instead of saying int key or string key or integer key or double or whatever, we use k for key and v for value. Cool. So when we're adding things to our hash, at some point we have to make the decision, OK, we've got enough elements in there. We're going to resize. And the time to do that is when you add something. And you can either look just before you add or just after you add, and it really doesn't make any difference. I usually put it in just before I add because then I've actually remembered to do it. And so all we have to say here to test if we're going to resize is if our current load factor, and load factor, remember, is just the number of elements divided by the table size. And so we can just have a simple method that returns that. If our current load factor is greater than max load factor, and max load factor was a globally scoped variable we set, then we're going to resize. And the way we'll resize is we'll just call our resize method. And our resize will take a new, table, uh, take a, a new size of our table. Um, and we'll just double our current table size. We typically, with data structures, we typically don't decrease the size as we're removing objects. If we're going to remove everything so we get an empty table, we can just call make empty. Um, but we will increase the size, allocate more memory as we're adding stuff. But we typically don't decrease, although we could decrease quite easily with the hash because the way our resize method that we'll, that we'll talk about soon the way our resize method works, it just takes a new table size. And if that table size is smaller than our existing table size, we'll still resize our hash. OK, so we've taken care of resizing. Not a big deal. Now we've got our key and our value. So let's create an element that we're going to store. So hash element kv. And I'm just going to call it HE. I'm pretty useless at variable names. I tend to make them short. Um, but hopefully something that reminds me of what's going on. And that's just a new hash element. Uh, I don't need the KV for a constructor. Key and value. So we've got our thing that we're going to add to our array. And so the next step, of course, is to find the position in the array where we're going to add this particular object. So we go through our steps that we've talked about. We get our hash value, and that's going to be key dot hash code. We take hash value, and we make it positive. We take our hash value, and we mod it on the table size. And that's the index of the array that we're going to use to add our element to our linked list. So we get our hash value. We get our hash code from our key. We make it positive because it's an integer. It could be negative. We just set the first bit to 0. We don't care that that could potentially make it a huge number. 
because the next thing we do is mod it on the table size. As long as we always do the same three steps, it doesn't matter what we do to the int. So now we've got our index, we've got our element to store in that index, so we just call our linked list. So we call our global array, hash array. We go to the index location, hash val. And so that's a linked list because we've already initialized our linked lists. And so we call the add method and we give it a new element up here that we created to add to our linked list. We increment our counter so we know how many things we have. And we're done. This method returns Boolean, but there's no reason why we couldn't return a void or return the key or return the number of elements or anything else. So we've got So we've got resizing. We've got creating a new object to add. We've got finding the index to add it to. And we've got our linked list. Are we going to use add first or add last on our linked list? Does it matter if we insert at the beginning or the end? It does not matter. We could have a tail pointer if we wanted to, but as you've already seen, Having a tail pointer just means you've got additional work to do because every time you do something like an add or a remove, you've got to check for the tail pointer. We could have a simple add first without a tail pointer because all we're going to do is add. It doesn't matter if we add first. Hopefully, most of the time, our linked list will only have one object in it, maybe two objects. It doesn't matter if it's the first object or the second object, right? So not having a tail pointer here would trivialize things, and we'll just use the add first method. Okay. Our remove method, our remove method will basically be the same. For our remove method, we don't need to worry about resizing. For our remove method, we don't need to worry about creating an object because we're not going to create something, we're going to remove something. For our remove method, we do need to get the hash code from the key, make it positive, and mod it on the table size. And for our remove method, we do call our linked list. And what do we call in our linked list? Yeah. Instead of calling hash array hash value dot add, We'll just call hash array hash value dot remove. We may want to provide the HE depending on exactly how we've got that set up. We do want to change number of elements, but we don't want to increase it. We want to decrease it. And that's it. Okay. So n this key here where we get the hash code from the key, where we make it positive, and we mod it on the table size is the key that we'll see all the way through in our hash. 